Hey Legionnaires, and welcome back here with another glorious Rome 2 Siege Battle for you, to, for you today. And we have a 3v3 Siege here. And this one apparently comes down to the wire. It's apparently one of the most brutal Rome 2 Sieges this player has seen. And this player has played a lot of Rome 2, I've been told. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited to see this one. It's supposed to be a really, really fun one. And I cannot wait. So yes, yeah, so we have some excellent uh, factions here today. Some big superpower factions. Battling against each other, as you can see, Macedon and Seleucids continuing their successor rivalry and they, uh, their Diadochi Wars, and they are getting involved in a fight early on. Also, Macedon seems like he's taking on Carthage here, so he's kind of getting double teamed. But yes, we have the two Diadochi, uh, like, sort of allies today. We have uh, Egypt and we have Macedon. We also have Rome on the attack. We have Kush, Carthage, and Seleucids on the defense. We already have some Kushite cavalry. Oh, there's some. Uh, Desert Armoured Cavalry, and they're going in, and they're going after this uh, Roman Onager, it looks like, early on, and maybe this Roman Legatus will be coming over to try and save it. This is also a big risk, though, for Rome to throw this in. Uh, he's got some legionaries that are going to maybe try and make a rush. I don't know whether uh, Kush is going to try it. doesn't look like he is. If he baits uh, this Roman general, though, in, and he can get him close to the walls, these archers could focus down that general, and that could be very, very handy for sure. Uh, I mean, Lucius Luce is losing his bliss, so that's no surprise there. But yes, Rome... To action. It's good to be back. Good to be back with a classic Total War battle. And I hope you guys do enjoy the battle. If you do, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're on here, and a comment show support. As always, guys, it's very much appreciated. And it'd be really good to play, uh, do some more Rome 2 on the uh, channel. I know you guys do enjoy your Attila and stuff like that, but it would be nice to do a bit more Rome 2. If you guys enjoy it, do let me know. Seems like these uh, these Italian swords here doing all right. They're, I mean, they're losing the silver chevron, but they're beating thorax as well, so they're doing their job. Taking up much more uh, ex ex oh expensive. I really wanted to say experience, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, much more expensive units. I mean, I think they're getting uh, taken taken out by these uh, by these Cretans back here. We have a lot of Cretans and Rhodian slingers as well. Don't think they've got a great angle at this uh, this range. We've also got Mercy Noble Fires already in the front line. They're very experienced. Uh, and we've got more than uh, Libyan Infantry as well. I mean, these are really, really elite units. They don't want to be throwing in those Mercy Nobles that early, I feel. Got some uh, Pick Peltas, uh, Royal Peltas, I should say, on the wall now. Not Pick Peltas. Rome has now landed as well. He's got Armored Legion. He's in it. Rome versus Kush. This is the perfect matchup for Kush. They've got low armor and they have got really good armor piercing. And they can take out these Armored Legionaries for sure. And it looks like they've got these archers waiting on the wall. And yep, now Rome is engaged. We've now seen the legionaries of Rome going against Shotel Warriors. This is a fight that Rome is going to struggle to win for sure. And yet, I mean, we've seen this plenty of times. And we've seen Kush just come out on top. But I don't I, uh, I still believe Rome can do well. Rome is a superpower. The game is named after it. After all, they can do well. If they play this well. They're already over here as well. Armored Legion is taking on Armored Shoulder Warriors. Yeah, this is good. That would be a tough fight, to be fair. The Shoulder Warriors are excellent. Even better than the Shoulder Warriors. It's like an, it's an upgrade. Rome, I feel like, has got to really use their pillar just to try and javy them down and try and weaken units. But yeah, Carthage have been broken here. Gallic Warriors are struggling. We also got Chotel's being broken here. They're facing Galatian Swords. Good matchup there for the uh, Egyptians. Uh, Galatian Swords also, I'm pretty sure, have low armor. So, uh, like, Kush isn't really going to get that, that armor piercing bonus there. The yeah, Thorax are starting to break their way through that. And by Thorax, I mean the Macedonian ones. They have thrown in the Peltasts but, um, to support. But yeah, they are trying to make some headway here. Seems like they have got another line of defense so prepared. I don't know why they're sending in fresh Thorax. You can just hold here. Have their next line of defense here. But I guess if they want to hold right here at the uh, at the wall. That's not a bad idea. Don't give them a single inch of ground. Seeing a lot of breaking here. Look at this Thorax on a chain route. Mass on his chain routing here. He's actually getting flanked by no Mercenary Noble Fighters. That is pretty brutal. Yeah, we're starting to see yeah, Thorax break across the line. I mean, they're shooting the Libyans in the back lines, but 
Not doing too much in damage there. Seeing a general as well, because like Royal Guard come forward. I mean, Arbitrary Hotels can go in here against the Galatians. They may be able to do okay there. We'll have to see. Rome is uh, making breaches in the front line. But yet to actually land any troops on this front here. But I guess, why would you? You're facing Kush here. That's not a good, uh, not a good place to land. Le Armored Legion is here getting... Uh, Having to hold back because at the moment Kush is in danger of flanking like all these Egyptian forces here. Could do a really good job seeing disciples at a at a pen mac going in. Apademac, I think I'd butcher the name, but there you go. They're in there fighting. Get rid of the foliage. You can see they're all in here doing their bit with their lion hats on. So many lions died for that. But it seems like. Seems like they are mopping up at the moment. I'm yet to see where this is going to turn around, but yeah, this is a brutal, brutal fight to start off. Show the warriors. Swords going in. Rome is going to have to turn this one around. He's going to have to do some heavy lifting here to try and cut through these swords. Cutting through these swords should be easy enough for Rome. The swordsmen aren't anything too special. The armor difference there is ridiculous. I mean, those swords, though, oh, they are starting to lose. They were, they were combat even for a moment. I was going to say they were holding the line, but maybe not. What have we got over here? Oh, gladiator spearmen? Don't really want them pushing up a ram or like a gallery. It's not even a. It's a gallery. I thought it was a ram. No. It's not even going to do any damage to that gate. I don't know why they were even thinking about doing that. Um, yeah, this, uh, this gladiator spear just needs to get up onto the wall and just try and do some damage. So they're not going to be. That effect would be better bringing gladiator swords, I would have thought. Yeah, the Romans here, they're trying to cut through. I mean, they're fighting in a weird column formation. I don't know what's going on here, but yeah, the swordsmen are getting cut down now. It's going to be like these Chotels that are going to do the damage, really. Though These ones are losing now. If Rome can keep pouring in the legionaries, there is hope. I mean, he's brought what more... Oh, there's a lot of armed legionaries right back here. He's just spam them out. It's not a bad idea, gladiator spearmen. Yeah, spamming them out. It seems like over here, though, Masson has kind of almost been... Kicked in their teeth, and yeah, he's kind of left for dead. Thoros spears, Thorax swords, Royal Peltas. That's all he's got left in the way of infantry. But well, he's got his pikes back here, levy pikes. Nothing too much exciting. He's spent a lot of money on his artillery here. His heavy energy here. I don't know if it's still got ammo, but yeah, he's trying to do his do damage with that. It seems like they have endless supplies back here at the moment. Do the uh, do the Seleucids and the Carthaginians, but there's plenty of time left in the siege. So I'm expecting uh, to see a bit of a turnaround pretty soon. And there you go. I mean, is Rome pulling through? No, this unit has broken. They're just standing still. Okay, fair enough. They're just refusing to break, but yes, Rome's still battling over here against Chotels now. He's actually facing a bit tougher opposition. See how he does here. Armored Legionaries. They're starting to lose, though, like I said. Facing that tougher opposition in the show to Warriors, they can't deal with it at the moment. Rome. Kind of getting pushed back. I mean, these Chotels are actually losing, but... I don't know. It seems 50-50. Rome and the Chotel War... Like, I'm leading against Chotel. It seems quite an even match. Sometimes the Romans are winning. Sometimes the Chotels are winning. It certainly seems like the armored Chotels, though, they cannot stand a chance to the Romans. But yeah, they're actually beating these uh, Chotels back now. Rome also looks like he's helped... Unite fronts with uh, Egypt as Egypt can pour in the rest of its remaining troops. I feel like Mastodon just needs to be patient. There's a lot of, like, Carthaginians and Seleucids here. In go the, uh... Mercy Noble Fires. These guys must have insane amount of kills. They've been in from the start. 115? Oh, maybe not then, actually. You know what? I usually see these guys at two, 300 kills. Not today, it would seem. What's this one doing? Two. This one must be doing pretty well. 185. That's much better. 
There's Carthage in hoplites, late Libyan hoplites coming up. It's actually, it's really strange. The Carthage threw in his elite first. And then left, uh... And then left a lot more, like, mainline stuff at the back. He's brought a lot of hoplites. I don't know if I would have bothered. Late Libyan, in, uh, like, Libyan infantry is just usually a lot more reliable. It seems like Rome here is sort of making progress. He's also going to focus down out here. He's generally needs to be careful. Syrian archers coming out as well. Trying to get maybe some flanking shots on here. That's a really good angle to be fair. If Rome, Rome should just pour up his archers. Is he going to bring two? I think he only brought two archers. He needs to pour them, pour fire though into this flank here. Do as much damage as he can just to support this front here. Because that's most of Rome's infantry. He's got three fresh units and that's it. Well, he's got a few more over here actually. These guys are very fresh. But yeah, no, you need to be careful. I mean, can't just be throwing away infantry. And he may just want to try and maybe focus other areas where Kush is not because... Kush is inflicting a lot of losses. Thorax over here seems like they're doing okay against Carthagean Hoplites. No real surprise, they are Hoplites. Spears should be beaten by swords in this uh, scenario, but yeah, we're all puzzled us winning here. Cut them down, boys. Dorax losing here though now to the uh, Carthaginian Hoplites. That's kind of unexpected. And our archers also, this is sad to see. Mercy Creeds. I hope they're out of ammo. I'm not sure, but they're getting caught out on the wall by uh, by just some Hoplites. So, I mean, these Hoplites won't have an easy fight in their life. Looks like they, I don't know, it's hard to say because the Arabs now have their swords out. So we'll never know if they had their bows out before. But uh, yeah, I hope those Creeds are out of ammo. Rome pushing on hard here, going against the Thorax of the Seleucids. Watch this red line push on. The thin light blue one is just about holding on. But it's thick in some areas, but you know what I mean. Seems like a lot of Romans being poured in here, and Egyptians. I should roll Peltas has been thrown in. Carthage. Oh, not Carthage, sorry. Rome, though, is doing quite a good job over here with his gladiator spears. Seems like they were making progress against the Chotels here. These, to be fair, gladiators against Chotels. I feel like gladiators are a good counter to Kush as well because they have low armor. You could also just bring like loads of Hastatis, another good way to counter Kush. Because they have low armor, but they're also very, very good. And then Kush doesn't get that sort of armor, that uh, armor penetration bonus. But yeah, it seems like the next line is Shoto, Armor Shoto Warriors. Kush, to be fair, is pretty short on infantry. He's got a couple more units sticking back here, but yeah, he's kind of, kind of short. If Rome can get through this, but just need the focusing troops down, just out, out uh, positioning Kush, then he could be okay. But they're now getting charged by the Shotels. These are actually pretty banged up Legion units. Jeez. In they go. Kill them all, boys. Kill them all. And they're fighting the foliage down here as well. I feel like with the charge bonus, Kush probably has the advantage here. Yeah, I mean, they've beaten this uh, Legion unit here. Armored Legion is being be beaten by these disciples of Adapenmak. So yeah, it seems like Rome may get pushed by, the, by the, that point. They are sending up fresh legionaries. There aren't many of them left, though. Everyone's bringing, like, onages. You should just bring, like, a fixed unit. It's much cheaper. It allows you to bring more, uh, more in the way of infantry. It's rare that your, like, stuff gets, like, your artillery gets taken out anyway. Or, like, like is useful in late game. Carthage having his archers focused on. He like, looks like he's losing in the uh, the Cretan archer battle here that's taking place between Egypt and Carthage. They're both bringing their mercenaries to the front lines and uh, letting them kill each other so they don't have to pay their uh, their mercenaries, which is a smart idea, I guess. And then the thing in the long run, no one of these two became some of the richest factions in the world. They didn't bother to pay their mercenaries because they let them go and get themselves killed. Excellent plan. 
got like spears versus spears here. No, it just look like the Royal Peltas and spears. They have a big old shield. No spear. Byton boys, looks like we're going to see a victory here for the Royal Peltas, but they're not going to come out with many men to make much of a push. So there's just Doros Spears in the back here. Like, these are probably some of the cheapest units, and he's not sent these guys in. Um, I don't know what he's... He must have thrown in a pike somewhere. Because he had two, unless one of these is a pike unit. Or maybe it's hidden in here. It might just be hidden next to this unit. But yet Rome looks like with the fresh leader, he might be able to just about take this. Shota Warriors starting to lose. Uh, Armour Shota Warriors losing here as well. Looks like Rome is, by the skin of his teeth, going to break through here. And we're going to have to see, like... I don't know. I feel like Carthage has done a really good job on his side. He's cleaned out Mastodon. Mastodon is basically dead. He's got a few units left here and there. Egypt is still kind of strong. Got a lot of Royal Peltas left, um, which is always good. Um, I mean, they've got a lot of, like, spears left back here. Lots of Thorax spears. They're not necessarily going to stop stuff. Royal Peltas today. Good. They've got Thorax pikes of Seleucids. That's very nice. Seleucids have saved all their Syrian archers as well. They've got all their ammo left. Uh, Kush look like they've got ammo as well. They've got a couple of Chotels. Yeah, it looks like everyone's pretty, like, set, but, like, on, uh, on infantry. It looks like Carthage as well is going to hold this next line here with some uh, swords and spears. Pretty good position. We'll also see, oh, a sally out here as well from Carthage. We're seeing noble cavalry, Carthaginian cavalry go out. Are they going to try and go and give for this general? Mastodon's general, maybe? We've also got Galatian Royal Gar back here that's been left by uh, Egypt. He's just left loads of, like, elite units out here. Royal Peldas and Galatians. Need to get them inside for the fight. Galat another Galatian Royal Guard on there. So they've got some good units left of Egypt. They seem like they've come out of this fight, um, like, this first stage. They're the best off. But, yeah, we're about to see a charge here onto, uh, onto Mastodon's general. I mean, Companion Cavs on the best cav around. It's going to be tough, but yeah, it looks like they're going to get a charge. It looks like Mastodon's not even paying attention. I don't know, but here we go. In they go. Charge in, boys. I mean, the Carthaginian Cavs no match, but maybe the Noble Cavalry could uh, give, them a, give them a good fight. We'll see. How's, the, uh, how's he doing? Yeah, combat even. He's literally lost one man. Uh, to be fair, both sides have only lost about one guy in that fight. I mean, if I was Egypt now, I'd be like, I'll get up here and support my ally. But, yeah, neither side really seems like they paid attention. Just going to be quite happily leaving this general here to, uh, to get in trouble. Not good at all. These are the capping this point here. I'll help with morale, which is always good. Yeah, seeing troops start to retreat. Seems like... Also, Thoros Spears landing here. Yeah, I mean, he's landing his Spears, but I was just trying to pull out his cap. He is. Oh, that's actually cost him. If he stayed in combat, I think he survives that okay. But, yeah, he lost kind of a lot of companions doing that. But this still fairly healthy. 43. The Royal Peltas were trying to... Uh... Royal Peltas is going to try and do their bit. Protect the general is what I was going to say. The uh, Carthaginian Cavs running away. Looks like he's going to go for some easy targets like archers over here. Mercy Rodian Slingers with ammo. They're running for their lives. They're trying to get on this uh, on this tower. They're going to get murdered because uh, once you get attacked, you all come off the tower. You see here, Pikes trying to chase them, but they won't be able to catch that cab, especially not in Phalanx. At least the Rodians won't... Mm, they took a few casualties, but yeah, not too many. They're just getting jabbed at the cab now by Thoros Spears off the wall. Not a bad idea, but I feel like it's a waste of jabbies. You want to save them for... Pikes and stuff later on. Yeah, not too bad. I mean, definitely could have just left these guys to uh, both these units to engage the uh, the Macedonian general and support him with infantry. Mason would have been fine, I think. Seeing the last of Carthage's like mercenary archers here lose. Capturing as many gates as possible. I guess I just don't want this general to come back inside, which is kind of a smart idea. I don't think they'll be able to get to the other one in time. Um, like this gate here, but I mean, not a bad idea. There is another gate all the way back here as well, which I feel like the Seleucids will protect with this Hellenic Cataphract general. But, I, I guess, yeah, just to just for our protection, take as many gates as possible. It's handy. We've got 20 odd minutes left. I guess that the attackers are just preparing and just building up ready for the uh, the next assault, which also probably will be the final assault because the defenders are just retreating straight on this point. They're going to have a lot of troops left. 
Defenders have got the balance power in their favor at the moment. Which is uh, never a good sign for playing as the attackers. But uh, we've seen great comebacks. We'll have to see how this one turn goes on. Maybe we'll just do a bit of fast forwarding while we wait. Oh no, maybe not to be fair. Egypt, I, to be honest, for some reason I thought Egypt would have a solution to players. But yeah, we're seeing that Egypt is giving focus down now by... Uh, Oh, by all of these Syrian archers. Jeez, yeah, they're going to probably be focusing on that general. Trying to inflict as much damage on him as possible. I mean, he's still got healthy numbers. 101. I mean, he's dropping now. He is dropping. Poor Romans looks worse for wear. I think they're going to try and get this general. Yeah, Macedon's general's going to be inside. Playing safe. I guess that was also why they were capturing the gate. Just to play safe, get him inside. Yeah, we'll just fast forward for now because it doesn't seem like anyone is doing anything. But if you are enjoying seeing Rome 2 on the channel and you'd like to see more, like I said, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're not here, and a comment show your support. Always helps. And uh, yeah, also if you want to get involved in some uh, in some like awesome Rome 2 battles, we've got plenty of like Rome 2 players uh, and like some awesome scenarios that we're thinking of making. So if you want to get involved in some of them, feel free to join the Discord with the links down below in the description of this video, as it always is. And yeah, it'd be really great to have you guys there for some battles, for sure. But yeah, we're just waiting on Rome or Egypt or Massel or someone to make the first move. Looks like Rome and Massel might be attacking on this, this front over here. And then we're going to see Egypt maybe take on the Seleucids in the back lines over here. Because uh, I guess they've got the healthiest army left. I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, we're seeing the remains of Egypt's forces coming in as well. I guess these guys maybe are going to support in the frontal assault. Yeah, we're just being patient, waiting on uh, waiting on them to make the first move. Every attack will be well planned out, including this one. It's a shame they haven't got any, like, artillery or something that they can use just to bombard, maybe kill a few generals. I feel like certainly killing a general or two would help with morale, uh, like, against for Rome. Like, for Rome, you want to, like, try and... Well, not for Rome, sorry. For um, Carthage and Seleucids and stuff like that. Rome 2 is, like... When you lose a general, some elite units will hold on and fight for a while, but I feel like you can do a lot of damage to morale killing a general. Um, it's not like the cap point really does anything beneficial for you in morale uh, terms, so that's always always a good thing. But yeah, it seems like Rome at the moment, they're just shifting. I guess they want to maybe assault these these two uh, Carthaginian units here first before moving on to the next point. I don't know. seems like they're just going to be taking out these hot plates, which to be fair are pretty healthy. You could maybe try and snipe this Seleucid general if they can... Stop all the point in getting back to any of these points. Like here, like Egypt can block off here, and then Rome can block off this one. Then there's no way back up for the uh, Seleucid general. He's stuck in the wrong. He's stuck behind enemy lines. That's that would always be a very smart thing to do. Rome setting up his uh, onager first. Just I guess it's not a bad idea. It seems like we're about yeah we're about to see Libyan infantry. They're going to go and defend this flank here because they realise that these uh, spears can be flanked. And I guess this is a good spot to hold, because if the Libyans hold there, they can just shoot straight into back with, like, Kushite archers or Seleucid archers. It'd be a really good spot to hold. But yeah, here we go. Rome taking on Carthage once again. The old rivalry continues. I feel like these Onager crews, though, is not going to make a dent in that Libyan infantry. Yeah, I mean, Egypt just has to move a little bit further, and I know this guy's hidden at the moment, but, like, I'm sure Egypt could go and accidentally find him. I mean, he should anyway. He should, like, if I was, well, actually, maybe not. A lot of these play these units are hidden, and a lot of them are hidden in here, so I guess you just assume he was hidden in there. Yeah, this could actually be huge, then. I'm just thinking this, like, this uh, Seleucid general hidden here is actually going to be, I think, a match, might be a match winner. Unless they find him soon, like, this Royal Peltas accidentally runs into him. Don't think he will because he is kind of hidden around this corner. But yeah, you never know. And Egypt is just standing here, which is allowing his units to get focused on, especially these Sobek cultists. They are very vulnerable, I'm sure, being uh, taken out. But yeah, Brawl Pelter Swell skin shot up. They had a they have a healthy army, Egypt when they uh, I felt like when they arrived, but maybe not so much now. Yeah, this is gonna be a tough nut to crack here, to be fair, especially with the uh, possible archer support that Kush could uh, su supply. 
But again here, this is a mistake now by Carthage. He's retreated his troops into, well, out of this choke point. And all Master has to do is just flank around to surround this, uh, surround this uh, living hoplite unit here, or living uh, infantry, sorry. You can surround that. And look, it's already been forced back, so now this this really good strong choke point they could hold is no longer useful. Seems just a bit of a waste. I feel like uh, Seleucus has got to push down with his Thoros, try and support this, because uh, Carthage is really just throwing away two infantry units if you, if, um, if you don't have any Seleucus support. Yeah, it seems like we're about to see Royal Peltas go into combat here with some Libyans, getting the Javis thrown into them. In they go. Or maybe not. They changed their mind and they're getting Javi to pieces. They turned the back at the wrong time when a Javi volley came in. Maybe now. Maybe now they changed their mind. Like, you know what? That Javi throw, we didn't quite like that. I don't know. They're turning around again. I feel like they just want to get off the Javi throws, which. Or maybe they just can't decide who to fight the Romans or the Egyptians. Who do they hate more? Maybe. I'd say the Romans, but quite a bit. There you go. Oh. Carthage is definitely trying to pull out that combat. That hasn't quite pulled through, but he very nearly did, I feel. Just to try and get his unit back. I don't know why I didn't just retreat it to start with. It seemed a bit silly to just keep it there. It seemed very silly, to be honest. Egypt has sort of made some progress. He's not exactly attacked, but he, he's, he's made progress. But here we go. Royal Peltas, they're going in. Yeah, they're fighting in there hard. I mean, I don't think the Royal Peltas will break through. These are fresh units here, which is a shame. I feel like this battle, it was hyped up to be so close. And it's, it's it's okay, but it's just not going to be insanely close. It seems like it's going to be a brutal one for sure. Brutal in the sense that the defenders are going to hold with a solid line here. They've got a solid battle line here with Thoros Spears. I think that they could probably break through this. These guys aren't that impressive. They are mediums. Galatian Royal Guard going in. They'll cut through these uh, through these Thoros. I imagine they're going to soon be losing. I mean, we're seeing uh, Thoros Spears going against Thoros Spears. Anyone could win that one, but I put my money on the Thoros Spears. Galatian Royal Guard, yeah, cutting through these poor Thoros Spears. Gushai archers, they're uh, pretty banged up, but I mean, actually, this one's kind of fresh. I don't know, most of them actually are. I just hovered over the one that wasn't. Thorax, yeah, I mean, Macedon here is just beaten. I don't know where his pikes are. Oh, here they are. Levy pikes, they might help. They are very vulnerable, though. They are only like, well, they're heavy pikes. They're pretty good. Or on this side, Egypt throwing everything in. He's just thrown everything in the kitchen sink to just try and break through this line here. We're seeing Syrian heavy archers actually hold them back. Thorax, though, are still holding. But now, I mean, now would be the time. If you're the Hellenic Cataphract General here, you'd be thinking, you know what? I fancy my chances against all of this. Like, you can start a rear charge. You, the Royal Peltas General is starting to wait. Oh, he's not wavering, he's losing. That's, that's a good sign, I think, for charging. You could just hit this, this unit in the back. You get so many kills with this general, you'd be merciless. Brutal, I'd love to see some kills.
Yeah, it's in so many like sort of like Greek factions fight today. It's been awesome. I really do like the see like sort of like Diadochi rivalries. Um, yeah, we're seeing like the Thoros start to like lose. I'm no surprise, not surprised about this. They are fighting much, much more elite stuff. I thought I, I thought this was a, a defender cav unit here. I was like, oh great, we're gonna see some like charges, but no, it's just the companion cav. He's still chilling. Haven't actually seen where um oh Carthage general did get back inside. Did not even realize. Don't know where the cav ended up. Oh, it's still out there. Still got Carthage and cav just loitering here, waiting for the right opportunity. Don't think they're gonna get one. We're gonna get one. Egypt is starting to waver on this side. Not a good sign. And there you go. You just had a break. The general's all on his own on this side. Oh yeah, Egypt's in real trouble here. I thought we were gonna see some hammer and anvil charge as well from the Hellenic general. I think cataphracts. No, not to be. Egypt could sneak through this gap here though. This is. This is good. Just keep pushing Egypt. There's like, it's just one guy probably getting stuck on a format on like the formation. Just push through. Not like pull through, but just like yeah, push on. I mean, it's risky. Oh yeah, very risky when his armor show tells you the side. He just needed to be super aggressive there and try and get him behind. And there should have been another unit ready to back him up, like another Roman unit. It's all in. It's all in vain now because I think balance power is just too far in one direction. But you can do it if you can just get some. Uh, some more kills. That's what you got to go for. Who can get the most kills? That's what I go for now. Kill as many of those defenders as you can. Honestly, honestly, it all went wrong here. Mastodon just threw so much of his army against this wall and just lost so much of it. Um, also, I think a match of a Kush versus Rome is not a great move. I think as soon as, I don't know, it's it's always hard. It's always really hard in these sort of like multiplayer battles, like. As soon as you can see, like, um, like what the factions are playing, like Rome, Macedon, Egypt, really heavily armored factions. Someone goes Egypt and counters it. Uh, really, then one of the attackers should have changed the barbarian faction, faced Egypt, and made it really difficult. Uh, not Egypt, faced uh, Kush, sorry, and uh, and then faced him down. And then, then the, the whole problem would be nullified. Kush would have probably had a really rough time. If it's someone against, like, I don't know, Swavy, Swordmasters, send them in. Like, Warden has Spears, like, those sort of things. They could just overwhelm Kush. They could do a lot of damage. Now. So, yeah, Thor Spears still losing. Yeah, we're now seeing all of the troops that were facing Egypt. They're now shifting this way. I mean, I don't know why they've still got the pike. I mean, keeping some weak units here, I guess, not a bad idea. Rome, though, has to just throw the rest in this way. I mean, it's going to be... It's going to be a close victory, I think, for the uh, for the defenders. But they're going to come out with a lot of health units. Well, Thorax Pikes here, lying in the walls. I've not seen any action. Royal Peltas is well doing what they can. Just fast forward a little bit. Oh, we're about to see a charge here from the like Cataphracts. Oh, I'm excited if we are. Send these boys in. I mean, if they send them against the legionaries, that is not going to do anything. But send them against, like, rear charge onto these armored legionaries in the fight. Uh, that, that will be exciting. Oh, he's actually, yeah, I think he's just going to charge straight on to these archers that are, uh, he's, yeah, I mean, that wasn't a bad charge, actually, oh, yeah, they actually did not do a bad charge there to those legionaries. But yeah, I mean, these auxiliary Syrian archers, kind of losing decisively, not doing the great, um, that was a pretty good charge there, I'm, how many kills do you think they got? 50, yeah, and the first charge, it's very nice, keep doing that, Egypt now uh, bringing over Glacian Royal Guard, bringing them back, I guess, maybe just to protect Rome, I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking of doing with them. He needs to get these pikes. Just put like a pike in this uh, position here. You can block the uh, the cataphracts off for a little bit. Did Rome lose his general? I think he has. I just realized Rome's lost his general. How the heck did that happen? Am I just being blind? I don't know. Yeah, Hellenic cataphracts going in here. They are running these guys down. 101. Oh, here we go. Rome's chain routing. Rome is chain routing. Oh, no. That is not good. What is still outside the walls? There's something. Oh, oh no. Is that the. Um, oh, this is Carthaginian Cab. It's just marking his enemy. That's very bizarre. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not a good sign. 
And we're then just going to see the companion. Yeah, it looks like the companion cab is then going to just be the last thing al alive. Oh, the, the Roman. Oh, no, there's a Roman general. I do apologize. He's still alive. I did think he hadn't been killed. Legatus just popped a rally. I'm uh, trying to keep things in the game. But uh, I don't think that's going to have helped too much. We're now going to see the, the final stand of generals by the looks of it. We'll score some uh, armored legionaries in a bit. But yeah, like I said, it was just definitely lost that first assault. It wasn't the closest. Um, like, they, I kind of got this impression it was going to be a really close one once it was brutal. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly was brutal in the sense that the uh, the defenders just kind of cleaned house, I feel like, on this uh, on this bit over here. Mastodon just, just faces like a wall of infantry. Companion Cab and like, Legacies are running for their lives. They actually might get this general here. This Hellenic Cataract is in real trouble. I think he may have died. Nope, don't think he has. We're going to see a Kushite general come out as well. Why... Seleucid Savage just rushed their infantry here. They could maybe get him. Yeah, I think he's now died as this uh, Seleucid general. That's a shame. Rome is about to lose his general, though. And then we will see uh, Mastodon's probably go very, very shortly as well. Yep, Rome's general's broke. Then we're going to see the Mastodon one go as well. We'll just fast forward even. But yeah, that is basically the battle. So uh, we will just go to the end screen. We'll quickly have a look at the end result in a moment. But it's been a fun one. It's certainly been nice to come back to Rome 2. Uh, the Rome 2 is just a classic, classic uh, Total War. It just really is. It's going to go down as one of the greats, in my opinion. It'll be fun to see uh, see the results of oh, Rome's general survived. Oh, jeez. And he's going to... What is he doing? He's dismounting and running away. Oh, my gosh. This is a salty Rome player. One salty player who's just like, yep, yeah, I am not staying around. He just needs to go in there and accept his fate. He's not going to win. He can't win in any possible way. Oh, they cut the gate as well. So it's going to take them a few minutes just to go out there and uh, recap it. Or, like, recap this and then charge him. I mean, Kush's general should be able to do the job alone. Especially since he dismounted his general. There you go. Oh, we also have Carthage's generals also. Uh, also uh, oh, how apt. Rome being defeated. Oh, is he actually going to... What's he doing? Are they dismounting their generals? He's being honorable. I like it. It uh, doesn't look like Kush is going to do the same, though. He's just going to run this guy down. Rightfully so. Oh, no. Or maybe not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, it's going to be a general battle, but in uh, on foot. Excellent. What a way to go. In goes Rome. I mean, Rome should break pretty quickly. Army losses alone should just uh, see this be a Roman defeat. But there we go. We'll have a quick look. Yeah, wavering. And that should be the battle. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. A costly victory for Carthage. But yeah, it was a, certainly a fun one. But a fungus sent this one in playing as Carthage. Um, we'll quickly look at some of his results. His general 174, 121 with his Carthaginian Cav. Uh, 91 kills with the Libyan Infantry. And he's 257 with the Noble Fighters. Then we have NS Hep 22 playing as Seleucids. 145 kills with the Cataphracts. 209 with the Thorax Swords. Uh, 120 with the thorax swords here, and then Oscar playing as Kush. 126 kills with his desert armored cavalry. 184 here with the disciples, and 241 with the armored Chotels. Then we have Frost playing as Mastodon. 178 kills, 203 kills with Royal Pass. Even though we had a rough game, some good kills there. T Carter playing as Egypt. 156 with the Cretans. Uh, 132 with his Royal Peltas. His uh, Galatians actually doing pretty p uh, poor, unfortunately. And then Blue Tiger playing as Rome. Uh, anything insane. 170 kills, 200 kills with these armored legionaries. But yeah, that's about it for Rome. But there you go, guys. I hope you did enjoy, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.